In this video, we're going to talk about how to draw the Lewis structure of sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Now, there are a lot of atoms in this molecule, and chances are you can guess that sulfur is going to be the central atom. But where do you connect the hydrogen atoms and the oxygen atoms? Do you attach all of the atoms to sulfur? Where will the hydrogen atoms go? If it's not attached to sulfur, will you attach to oxygen? Which of the four oxygen atoms will you attach to two hydrogen atoms? And so there's a lot of questions that you can have when trying to draw the Lewis structure of sulfuric acid. So it's helpful to remove the two hydrogens and draw the Lewis structure of sulfate. Because once you can see the Lewis structure of sulfate, then you'll know where to put the hydrogen atoms. So let's draw sulfate first, and then we'll draw the Lewis structure of H2SO4. What we need to do is we need to add up the valence electrons in sulfate. Sulfur has six valence electrons. It's found in group 6A or group 16 of the periodic table. And the same is true for oxygen, but we have four oxygen atoms. Now we need to add two because we have a negative charge. 4 times 6 is 24, plus 6 that's 30, plus 2 is 32. So we have 32 valence electrons in the sulfate Lewis structure. Because 32 is a multiple of 8, this tells us that there's not going to be any lone pairs on the central sulfur atom. Now let's place the four oxygen atoms around sulfur. Now you might be thinking, we need four bonds because we want to satisfy the octet rule. If you're thinking that way, keep in mind, sulfur is in the third row of the periodic table with phosphorus and chlorine. And those elements can have what is known as an expanded octet. That is, they can have more than eight electrons. So sulfur can have more than four bonds. To draw the best Lewis structure, we need to draw it in such a way that we can minimize the formal charge. We want a formal charge of zero on a central sulfur atom. Here's a simplified formula to calculate the formal charge of an element in a molecule or a polyatomic ion. It's the valence electrons minus the sum of the bonds and dots on an element. In this case, sulfur has six valence electrons. We don't know how many bonds we need. We know that there's going to be no lone pairs based on this number since that's a multiple of eight. If there's no lone pairs, the number of electron dots on sulfur is zero. Now we want the formal charge to be zero. So therefore, what should B be equal to? Well, we know that six minus six is zero, so we need six bonds. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now oxygen is a second row element. It cannot have more than eight electrons. Oxygen must obey the octet rule in the sense that it will never have nine or ten electrons. So anytime oxygen has two bonds, it's going to have two lone pairs. And anytime oxygen has one bond, it's going to have three lone pairs. Unless, of course, you're dealing with an oxygen radical. Now, the next thing that we need to do is calculate the formal charge on each oxygen atom. So let's start with the double bonded oxygen atoms. So each of those have six valence electrons. They have two bonds and there's two lone pairs or four dots. So six minus six is zero. These two are neutral in charge. Anytime oxygen has two bonds, it typically has a neutral charge. But when it has one bond, it usually has a negative charge. So focusing on this one, that oxygen has one bond, three lone pairs, which equates to six electron dots. So we have six minus seven, and we're going to get negative one. So these two oxygen atoms, the ones that are single bonded, have a negative charge. Now you could think of sulfuric acid as being one sulfate ion combined with two hydrogen ions. So what we're going to do in order to make sulfuric acid is we're going to add two hydrogen ions to that structure. 
So if we put two hydrogen ions next to sulfate, how will they interact? Well, we know that opposites attract. The negatively charged oxygen atoms will be attracted to the positively charged hydrogen atoms. And they will each use one lone pair to form a bond between oxygen and hydrogen. So thus the Lewis structure of sulfuric acid will be as follows. In this structure, each oxygen atom now has two bonds, which means they will all be neutral in charge. So this is the Lewis structure of sulfuric acid. And that's how you can draw it.